Hi boys and girls, welcome back with myself, Miss Tabor, giving you another lesson on our um, level literacy intervention that I have permission from the publisher Heidemann to share with you, which is awesome. It's a great tool that they have provided for us to use during our digital learning. So today's lesson will start with a phonics piece. We are going to be working on base words and adding different endings to change the word, and then we will get to a new book that is a classic story and maybe you have heard another version of this story before but it's a really um, interesting story I think you'll enjoy. So let's go ahead and get started on our um, phonics lesson. So I mentioned we are going to be working on base words and adding different endings. This changes the tense of the word and it matters to have correct grammar or correct speech. So the one column has base word, we will be adding an S, we will be adding an ING, and we'll be adding an ED. So let's get started. So the first word is look. I can look at the flowers. If we add an S, the word is looks. She looks at the flowers. Let's add ing, look in. She is looking at the flowers. And then we'll add the ed, which means it already happened. She looked at the flowers. Adding an ed is tricky because it can sound about three different ways. This one in looked, it sounds like a t at the end. Even though you know it's an ed because it already happened. It is past tense. New word, play. I like to play on the swing set. Let's add an S. The word is plays. He plays on the swing set. Let's add the ING. He is playing on the swing set. And then we will make it past tense, adding the ED, played. He played on the swing set. The next word is stay. I like to stay at my parents' house. Let's add an S. He stays at the parents' house. Let's add the ing, staying. He is staying at his parents' house. And then we'll add an ed, past tense. I'm going to change the sentence as well. Stayed. He stayed at his grandparents' house. That probably makes a little bit more sense for you as a child because you always stay at your parents' houses. <laughs> All right, these next two words are tricky. I want you to pay careful attention to how the words are spelled. Now, the next, this next word is read. Or, if you remember, it can be pronounced a different way. I'm not going to share that with you right now. Read. He can read the book. Let's add the S, reads. She reads the book quietly. Let's add the ing, reading. They are reading the book quietly together. And then past tense, hmm, add an ed. She readed the book fast. No, we don't say readed. What do you say when the, you, you did it already? Yesterday I blank the book. Yesterday I read the book. Now it is not spelled like the color red. Make sure you don't do that. It is simply the same exact spelling as read, but in this case we pronounce it red. So if you're reading a sentence, and you see this word, you have to really use the words around this word read or read in order to know what tense the author is writing in. So you might read it one way and say, whoop, that doesn't make any sense, and you might have to read the word the other way. It's very tricky. All right, last one. The word is run. I like to run really fast in the grass. Runs. He runs away from the spiders. Ew. Running. I want you to pay really close attention to how I spell this word. 
double the final consonant and then add your ending or else the vowel, the first vowel will change the sound. Running, he is running away from the spiders. And then the last one, you already did it. He blank yesterday. He runned yesterday? No, he ran yesterday. Notice that that word is just a rule breaker. It completely changes and it's just how it is. So if you are mumbling and grumbling over there about what the heck, that doesn't make any sense, Miss Tabor. I know. You have to just memorize this one and practice it. That's all you have to do. Awesome job. Remember, when you're reading any book or any words, look for the base word, read the base word, and then figure out the ending, and then put the ending onto it. It'll really help you read bigger words easier. Which gets me into our next part, our new book. Let's take a look. It is a classic tale. Remember these classic tales always have a play version at the end where you could assign characters and parts and pieces and act out this story or just simply have different people reading the different parts. This book is called The Great Big hmm, Blank Turnip. This is a big word. I'm going to just say this first part, the vowel E. I can see this little word or this itty bitty one or add the n nor enormous. The great big enormous turnip. Now if you do not know what a turnip is, it is a vegetable that goes in the ground. You may eat it and it kind of looks like this. Kind of like a radish. So. In this story, there is a farmer and he grows different things. In this book, it's a turnip. Now we have to read it in order to see what happens. Does he have a problem? How do they try to solve the problem? And what is the solution? How did it get solved? I'm going to read this book to you. I want you to listen and enjoy. At any moment, stop and pause the video and you read it yourself. This will really help you become a more fluent and accurate reader. The Great Big Enormous Turnip. One day, a farmer planted a turnip seed. Then he went off to bed. The seed grew all night. It grew and grew and grew. Look what the author did here with this sentence. The text or the words, just the word grew, got bigger every time. We'll think about what the word grew means. Oh, that makes sense why the author made the text larger after every time he wrote it. And I also noticed this word planted. I see the ending, the ed, so I take that off. Oh, plant. Oh, ed, planted. Easy peasy. Okay, so it grew and grew and grew. The next day, the farmer came out to check on the plant. Wow, he said, look at that turnip. I'll pull it out and we can have it for lunch. The farmer pulled and pulled on the turnip, but the turnip did not come out. I'm thinking right now, this is a problem. How is the farmer going to get the turnip out in order to have it for lunch? Can you think or predict how the, the farmer might solve his, his problem? Hmm. Well, let's find out. The farmer's wife came out to check on the farmer. Wow, she said, that is a big turnip. We can have it for lunch. Help me pull it out, said the farmer. The farmer's wife pulled on the farmer. The farmer pulled on the turnip, but the turnip did not come out. So they still have a problem. The farmer's son came out to check on his mother. Wow, he said, that is a great big turnip. We can have it for lunch. Help us pull it out, said the farmer. The son pulled on his mother. The wife pulled on the farmer. The farmer pulled on the turnip, but the turnip did not come out. 
Is it even moving? Is it budging at all? Hmm. So now they have three people pulling on the turnip. Do you think this story could actually happen? Look at the size of the turnip. Look at the size of the characters. Interesting. Fiction or nonfiction? Woof! Woof! said the farmer's dog. You pull too, said the farmer. Pull with us, said the wife. Pull! Pull! said the son. The dog pulled on the farmer's son. The son pulled on his mother. The wife pulled on the farmer. The farmer pulled on the turnip. But the turnip did not come out. Hmm. Now they have four characters pulling on the turnip and it still did not come out. How are they going to solve this problem? Then a mouse ran up to the farmer. Squeak! Squeak! said the mouse. You can't help! said the farmer. You are too little! said the wife. Go away! said the son. Woof! Woof! said the dog. But the mouse pulled on the dog. The dog pulled on the son. The son pulled on his mother. The wife pulled on the farmer. The farmer pulled on the turnip. Hmm. Can this itty bitty mouse really do anything to that turnip? Pop! Up came the turnip at last. What a great, big, enormous turnip! yelled everyone. Now we can have it for lunch. <laughs> this page always makes me laugh. Look at the mouse upside down. But look, all of their eyes are trying to gaze at the turnip and the work that they did to get it out. The farmer cut up the turnip. The farmer's wife baked the turnip. Then the farmer, the farmer's wife, the farmer's son, the farmer's dog, and the mouse all ate the turnip. The end. So I, before I show you these next pages of the play version, I just want to talk about this. So that farmer planted the turnip and it grew so big that he could not get it out himself. And he had to ask for help. So thinking about the characters that helped the farmer get the turnip out. There was the farmer's wife, the farmer's son, the farmer's dog. They all tried to pull and pull and pull, and that turnip would not come out. And then finally, along came that itty-bitty mouse. And no one wanted the mouse around because the mouse is just so little, and they did not think the mouse would help. But the mouse helped anyways. And thank goodness the mouse helped because the turnip finally came out of the ground with the mouse's help. So thinking about... Um, the lesson of this story, even the littlest thing can make a difference. That little mouse made all the difference that they needed to pull the turnip out. It didn't have to be something big and strong. It just had to be a little extra. And also, working together, as they all did, helped solve the problem. They were able to do what not one person could do alone. They had to work together, which is a really important lesson that we all need to practice every single day. Okay, so now I'm going to go through these pages slowly so you can go ahead and have a chance to do the play with someone. Remember the narrators are not the characters talking in the story, they are the people telling the story. Okay, so thinking about those. Remember, if you don't have this, this many people in your family or your home, double up on characters. Somebody could be the farmer's wife and the mouse. Maybe you're three characters. Maybe you are just going to read this by yourself for fun, and you are all of the characters. Okay, enough of me. This is for you. There you go. All right. The great, big, enormous turnip. Now remember, using base words, 
finding the base words and then adding endings is a really great way to help you read words that are bigger. Um, it makes the words smaller, you can read them in chunks, and you're able to read them more fluently. So our next lesson will have a new story. We will continue working on our base ending chart, and I will see you again soon. Have a great one, guys.